So, first of all, did you see the work that's go ongoing at the Kobeche Yeah, yes, yes, yes. They, they have completed what I took to Parliament to mm -hmm. and approved, okay. uh, which they feel to acknowledge. Uh, they are doing the second phase now. Uh, they, mm. are, they are excavating. Uh, I think they are even erected one of the piers. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what they have. They have increased to over hundred million dollars. Okay. We are going to do it around sixty something million dollars. Yes. Okay. So, the one from Graphic Road mm. to Kaneshi, mm. that one was what you took to Parliament. Yes. And got approved. Yes. I took I took a memo to Parliament which I said that the project would be done in two phases. I was coming for approval for the first phase. And the first phase was to co connect uh, the to, to raise the uh, road and, and create a connection between traffic originating or emanating from Kaswa going into Accra. And the second phase would will connect because you know because we had done the uh, cycle interchange. Okay. Uh, traffic flow to Obechebi Limited Cycle had increased and the speed. I mean, the, the speed had increased. The mm -hmm. time it, it took traffic to move to Obichibi, Obichibi it's faster. At, uh, faster. Okay. And so that created a congestion at the Obichibi run, uh, uh, runabout. So it was a natural extension of the uh, uh, circle interchange. Okay. And we had done uh, the graphic road. You know, mm -hmm. we had done the bridge, which also separated it from yes. the rails. Yes. And so. The traffic was no longer passed on the railway tracks, yeah. and so it was faster there. Except for trotro drivers Except trying to pick passengers. To pick, to pick <laughs> passengers. So it yeah. was faster there. <laughs> and we had done the Kaswa. Yes. And so traffic emanating from that area was faster. Yeah. But when it got to Ubichibi, it created a congestion. That was a bottleneck. So Ubichibi Lamte Interchange is an extension, a natural logical extension of the works that we had done in Kaswa. The graphic road, road and, and the second okay page. okay uh, but uh, i wanted to find out something you were the last time you were saying uh, as part of the works we mm -hmm. were looking at the redevelopment of the kaneshi lorry park well uh, yes kaneshi market lorry park mm -hmm. uh, the cemetery road okay uh, the wuzokai area okay uh, road and drains because that place the drains were very small mm -hmm. and so that's why any time it rains that place is flooded mm -hmm. because the amount of water generated by reason of the construction works mm -hmm. around surrounding areas mm -hmm. brings all the water and, and that place a natural low light area mm -hmm. uh, that's part of the quality okay okay the lagoon and so when the if the drains are not increased the you get a natural flooding mm -hmm. okay and all Accra water passes under the Ubechibi Lamte okay. circle. And mm -hmm. so so we 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 the plan that we took for the redevelopment of that area included some area local routes, mm -hmm. uh, the, redes the redevelopment of the markets, the uh, Accra Metro Assembly, you know I think there's an engineering department of Accra Metro Assembly. Mm -hmm. That road that links to the cemetery area mm -hmm. uh, to be redone and, and and some other roads, yes. Oh okay. Uh, but uh, I was also wondering, so at what point were you going to do the redevelopment? So the first phase that... No, the redevelopment was to be done together with the construction. I mean, that is the package. Okay. Okay, so in, if, if any time we announced, if we're in power, if we announced that we had finished the Obechibi Lempte Interchange, mm -hmm. you will see all the that development. As part of the package? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether you, you use this area frequently. No, uh, but you, you've dealt with you've board. dealt with Quaresh Gaval before, I believe. Carlos Gaval, yeah, they did the uh, uh, second stage, they did the Tamale Airport, mm -hmm. they did the Tamale Asphalt Overlay, mm -hmm. they did the Accra uh, uh, Jamestown mm -hmm. Overlay. So I uh, dealt with them. Okay, I do you know them to be slow when it comes to work on these constructions? No, I don't know. They're not slow. They're not slow. What what normally contractors themselves are not slow. Okay. Time spent on contracts increases the cost of the contract. Okay. So naturally, contractors do not want to spend time on on their on their works. Okay. And because of fluctuation, I mean, how many times have petrol prices increased over the period? Mm. Uh, when the contract was uh, uh, awarded, petrol, I mean, con con uh, conveying materials from a, a source a source areas to the site was calculated as, at a certain cost and inputted into the contract. And so when the price 
uh, of petrol changes. It affects, significantly, it affects the contract price. And that's mm -hmm. how we can, we get fluctuations uh, in, the, in, in the contracts. So contractors themselves, they want to, and then foreign exchange losses and all those things. So they, they want to be able to finish their contracts on time. What happens is that uh, this contract is being funded by, uh, by a loan that uh, covers Carlos Gaval got for government. Government is, itself has a commitment, about a 15% commitment. So what happens to delay contracts of that nature is when gov the government fails, refuses, or neglects to contribute its quota, its commitment uh, to the project. And so my suspicion is that uh, the, even though Carlos Gaval was able to assess a loan facility for the construction of the second phase, government was uh, slow in coming up with this commitment. Okay. Yes, and, and if, when that happens, the bankers are not going to release the, the monies, are not going to give okay for drawdowns if they don't see Ghana government's commitment. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they were able to secure a loan, mm -hmm. but what, when they say commitment, what do you mean? You know, foreign, foreign companies want an assurance that this project will be completed and Ghana government will be committed to the completion of the project. Okay. So they are not going to fund any project 100%. All right. They are going to ask Ghana government to show commitment to the implementation of the project. Okay. And that commitment is manifested in a percentage in government, Ghana government bearing a percentage of the, of the construction cost. It ranges from 15 to 20, but in the Pokwasi Ebru uh, 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 Road, that's, that's, that is the road that starts from Kwabinya through Ibri. Uh, that that uh, road, Ghana government's commitment was about 30%. You see, so the, if Ghana government does not show or does not come up with the commitment, uh, which is normally one of the conditions precedent okay. for the drawdown drawdowns to happen, the foreign company, the foreign banks, the, for, the foreign lenders hold onto their money okay. uh, because they don't want the, the project not to be completed. Okay. Because if Ghana government does not show commitment, they have co their money alone will not be able to complete the project, and if the project is not completed, then it becomes a waste. And they don't want to be part, even though we will pay, but they don't want to be part of a, a system which which creates situations where the people of a country does not benefit from the loan facility that the country. Okay. So then what do you make of, uh, because I recently, I, I think your successor was there mm -hmm. and was complaining about the slow pace of work. Did he talk about the commitment? No, he didn't talk about the commitment. But uh, my, my, my successor has also gone to other contractors to go back to site. When the contractors have not been paid for about nine months, the last time they were paid was in December 2020. All contractors, because just recently that the road fund uh, was integrated, not so the board of the roads was was integrated, and the they are still uh, uh, haggling over how much uh, will go to the minister, how much will go to to pay uh, priority projects, and how much will be used for uh, periodic maintenance. So. And, and it's nine months, September. They've not been paid. And so if you ask contractor to go to site, how is he going to do the work? Because they, no contractor has money lying under his bed to take the money to go and do work. When you give a contractor a contract and assurance that you will pay within a certain time, the two documents or more are based upon which the contractor goes to his bankers. Mm -hmm. They say, that, look, I've gotten this government job and they are promised to pay. Now, <laughs> if a contractor has done work and he has not been paid. Which banker will still continue to lend the contractor money? After all, the nine months that they have not been paid, interest on the loans that they took is accruing. And so it might happen that the contractor is finally paid and he gets nothing. Okay. Because interest would have consumed okay. all his uh, 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 what, what margins that he's going to make on the contract. Hmm. Well, if you just join us, I was just taking your view, your view briefly on that issue, yes. uh, that particular contract, because one was, was one of the, the contracts you left. Yes, yeah, the signature contracts of John Draman Mahama, which has now been uh, uh, taken away by uh, the MVP government. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so taken away. 
Uh, they don't want to associate the government with the project, even though that was a, I'm telling you the rationale for uh, the building of the uh, the Nkrumah interchange, called Nkrumah interchange. I'm telling you the rationale for building the Obijibi circle interchange, changing it into, into an interchange, the circle into an interchange. I've, I've told you about the Kaswa. I've told you about the graphic. Uh, this were, these are part of the general development of Accra in order to ease congestion on the roads and ensure that people get to work early enough to be able to discharge their duties. Hmm. The, another one is the one, uh, the Pokwasi interchange. Uh, that one, you said everything was done. I thought the Pukwasi interchange, sometimes when you are talking about it, you, 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 you feel embarrassed that the government has so far decided to ignore uh, the contribution of His Excellency John Draman Mama's government to the actualization of the project. The hmm. concept, the project concept, the design, the settlement on the uh, source, funding source, the engagement with the African Development Bank, mm -hmm. the project cost, and everything was done by John Draman Mama's government. In fact, I had the privilege of meeting the officials of the African Development Bank. I even, uh, the contractor who is now working on it, mm -hmm. had been assured that uh, uh, he will be part of the con uh, contracts who will, contractors who will bid for the project. So they paid a visit to my office and told me that they were uh, in touch with the African Development Bank and looking at uh, winning the contract to do the project. But this government says they did they, they, they design it. They, they, it took a lot of time. It doesn't take uh, one, one year to do a project, to design a project, uh, engage your financiers, uh, settle on the amount of money to be used, uh, finalize the design, and all those things before the contract. It takes roughly a minimum of 18 months to do that. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> from, from, from more indications, even if we had done taken over, that road would have been done. Oh, it's just like the N1. <laughs> Kufo started it. He got uh, the Million Challenge account to, to give us money because it was going to assist in transporting, facilitating the transport of goods from the Cape Coast area, uh, the western region, to the port. And Baratamils took over and then continued the project. Hmm. Well, well, are there a few road projects in your time that you are disappointed with the kind of work that is done on it? Oh, there are many, there are many, there are many. There are many. I don't see any major road that has been done now. Any major road that has been done. In fact, the Tema Motorway, we had finalized discussions on the Tema Motorway. We had secured a financier. He had pledged 200 million. We had this, a, 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 a concluded on the design of the Tema Motorway. It was going to be a six-lane road with slip roads. Uh, there were about 26 bridges on the motorway. We assessed them and we concluded that even though some of the bridges were strong, we needed to change all of them because you would not know the useful lifespan of those bridges if you finally reconstruct the road and some of the bridges fail. So uh, we had said that yes, so all the bridges uh, would have to be redone. Mm -hmm. We have said that the uh, because of, sent of sentimental and em emotional reasons, the Tema Motorway will still be a concrete overlay. Okay. Uh, because we didn't want that was the first concrete road in Ghana, okay. and we still wanted that uh, to the road to manifest uh, that the fact that Nkrumah had thought that that road should be a concrete road, and and to pay tribute to Nkrumah, we wanted to redevelop the road use some concrete. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, what was left was. Uh, for us to conclude discussions on the uh, road from the Tema port uh, to, through the Tema hospital mm -hmm. uh, to Ashima, uh, because that was going to be the, uh, a, a busy road. And you will see that the, uh, one of the golden gates at the, at the, at the port mm -hmm. uh, where it, uh, vehicles are cleared, when you clear the vehicle, you will use that road Mm -hmm. and you come to join the Tema Motorway. Mm -hmm. The discussions were on it, uh, how, to, how to reconstruct the road and make sure that uh, the road can bear 
the weight that will emanate from the port. Mm -hmm. And and if discussions were concluded, uh, the contractor, the contractor who did the uh, port expansion, was the contractor who secured the funding, and and so we would have, would have gone ahead to get a contractor to use the funding to redevelop the road. Hmm. Hmm. So that one too was set, and by this time, a lot of work would have happened on it. Oh, I am sure by this time we would have finished the work. That time I'm away. Yes. Work, work and discussions on the road was far advanced, far advanced, far, far advanced. Ah, why, why? The Volvo Bridge. Mm -hmm. I traveled to uh, Japan with His Excellency John Draman Mahama. You will recall that Jap before John Draman Mahama joined politics or came into politics, he was working at the Japan embassy. The Japan the government was very excited. Uh, I, I think Abi was the one who was there at that time. And uh, as part of his appreciation for John Muhammad's contribution to the uh, uh, development of uh, Japan in terms of working for the government of Japan in Ghana, uh, the Volvo uh, Bridge Loan was signed when we visited Japan. Hmm. And the last time I was talking to the minister, he did not actually even know that there was that money sitting there waiting for the bridge to be done. He had no idea. He had no idea. And you know, the, the that not only that, we are going to extend the in Kumasi, uh, the the drains that uh, uh, Mustafa Hamid, as Minister for Zungu said, they had deserted, which generated that Ferrari. Mm -hmm. uh, we had secured on the European Union funding about of about twenty three million euro for it. For it. The last time I was in Parliament, uh, and Muntaka asked the minister uh, the status of the of the of the project. The minister did not simply know about. So there are many things. Uh, but the uh, the Bohoy just kind road was being done by Rolida. Uh, he had done the base. Uh, at the time we were leaving office, uh, part of the road was uh, ready for uh, asphalt overlay. Uh, the came stopped him. Now he's there working. He started from the fresh. The same, the same contractor. The same contractor. After four years. Yeah. So there are many, many I mean, the, not to talk about the, uh, in the northern region, the uh, Tamale Karaga Bushigo Road. Uh, the contractor was there, Marapoma, busily working. Yeah. I mean, the last, the last time I was around that area, the people of that area took me to the road and said, Look, all the work you did on this road, look at the potholes that have come. The, the, the simplest of the contractor. He had also done this and then he was. Prepared to see whether he could do the uh, prim prim uh, primacy, and he was stopped. And, and, that, and then it, I don't know whether they've given the contract back to him. No, there's no work on that road. Well, there was no work. I mean, I, 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 I've not used the road for some time now, but uh, now I'm talking about 2021 when we campaign when I went there. And no work was happening. Hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I the minister recently visited, visited the Sandy uh road. <laughs> uh, my tenant was doing it. Uh, they came, stopped him. They did not ask him to go. And the minister went there and was, uh, uh, was rebuking him for slow work, forgetting that it is his ministry that ordered that he stops work, work for some time. And that is why the road uh, deteriorated. And so they have been many, 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 many contracts. I have heard stories about a lot of your colleagues who were in, under the John Romani administration being invited uh, to Yoko and other investigative bodies over contrast. When, when all these rules were stopped and they said they were auditing, were you one of those who suffered that? No, no, no. No, the one, <laughs> when they went, you know, uh, you know, let me express my sincere, use your network to express my sincere condolences mm. to the vice president for okay. having lost. The mother. the mother was a, a very decent woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up uh, associated with them, uh, with the with the Baumia family in Tamale. Okay. In fact, I attended school with some of Baumia senior brothers. Uh, so I know Auntie very well. A very decent woman. Uh, we lost her yesterday. Uh, may she rest in peace. Mm. And my condolences and sympathy to Mahmoud Baumia, mm. the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Okay, we're sharing that. The, the, the fact is, you recall that 
in one of the engagements with the people of Ghana by His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Bobia as Vice President of the country. He said that when they came in, some road co contracts were awarded to non-existent roads. Yeah. They commissioned uh, auditors to go around. They paid huge amounts of money to the auditors. Uh, the auditors not only found that the roads were there, they found that the contracts were not inflated. In some cases, they even found that the contracts that were, were awarded were significantly lower, the values were lower, mm -hmm. so they had to adjust them. So the contractors even got more money mm -hmm. through, <laughs> through their audit. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. They had to adjust them. They said that the values were low. The values that were used for those contracts? They were low. Were very low. Yeah. yeah. So what government did, government was, that's why they have not, Cocoa Board has not been able to publish mm -hmm. the audit findings. Okay. Yeah, because uh, they found that the rules were existent, the rules were there, they found that the, the contractors were on the rules working. Mm -hmm. They found that the contracts were not inflated. Uh, they also found that the value, some of the values of the contracts were low and so needed adjustments. Uh, what they recommended was that because uh, Cocoa Board and the government could not come up with money readily available to pay contractors, uh, they should stagger the uh, construction of those roads. So, they we call it the scoping. So okay. instead of doing 100 kilometers, they will say, okay, do 50. When you finish and we pay you 50, then we, we will think of awarding the, the 50. So they okay. risk scoped some of the contracts. Okay. But, but they, they never found that I was not, I was never invited to the uh, Yoko or the, uh, the police station or for any investigation on the awards of contracts. Was, Questions were never asked you? No, no, no. Because I'm wondering how they could make those suggestions and not really have a conversation with you on it. No, they, they were just propaganda. Pure propaganda, Pure nothing propaganda, more. Nothing more. Uh, you see, when, when I was at the ministry, and I, like I said to you not too long ago, mm. I believe in institutions. Okay. When as a head of, a, of an establishment, the departments under you are working and working well. And if they're not working well, it is your responsibility to make them work well. When, when they do work well, the burden on you is reduced. You don't micromanage anything because they work well. You just, you just offer the oversight mm -hmm. uh, and ask the relevant questions. Okay? Uh, if they come up with a contract... Uh, if you say, okay, this road, we need to do this road because of ABC, and they say, okay, so they, they take it away, whether it's the Department of Federal Rules, whether it's the Urban Rules or the Highways, and they come back with preliminary findings and cost. Uh, and you see that the cost is high compared to other projects that you have done. Your question is, can they reduce the cost? Okay. They should look at matters that are not tangential to the road and reduce the cost. For instance, if they tell you that contingency is 15%, you say, ah, why? Put 10% contingency. Or you think that there are others that will come. Even though sometimes contingency can go up to 50% because of the uh, unanticipated physical contingencies. You you are doing the road. You never thought that the ground was so soggy. Hmm. Like when we're doing the the road from Takradi to uh, the border, the Ilibo area. Mm -hmm. We got to a place where the road was so soggy, mm -hmm. and the piers that they sank was twice or thrice that what had been anticipated. So that consumed all the contingency, and need, we needed more money. So yes, so sometimes, sometimes the contingency can go high. But in this case, so you tell them, oh, why don't you reduce the contingency? I mean, if you are going to buy vehicles, and the vehicles are too many. So, ah, but you think that and all projects will have project vehicles. So, oh, we just completed this project. Can't you reassign those vehicles to this project so, so that you can reduce the cost? These are the questions that you will ask. But you never fix, a minister never fixes, at least when I was there, I never fixed the contract price. I don't know the contract price. <laughs> you don't know. The, the county surveyors are there. I'm not a county surveyor. The yeah, engineers the one, are there. Who decide what the Who country? is? Who decide? And sometimes they even will recommend contractors who can do the work because okay. they have a working 
in the area and they know the capacity of the contractors. So it is only when you you directly inter interfere in matters of who should do the work, uh, what should be the contract, and all those things. That's when you can be accused of doing things that clearly uh, are toward. Okay, I never did that. Hmm. Well, uh, uh, these questions will continue to come up as long as they are. And I never, I never, you see, in the road fund, for instance, mm. our plan was that by the end of the year 2016, we should not have arrears payable to contractors for more than six months. Okay. Because we realized that we're paying interest on on delayed payments and it was accumulated and you realize that you spent more money paying contractors for no work done other than the fact that the contractor's money was due and you did not pay within the 90 days according to the FedEx rules and then after 90 days the money would use to attract the interest. So you were paying him more for not doing the work and for you not paying him on time. Okay. So we said, look, why don't we ensure that at least within six months, a contractor, if his certificate arrives at the road fund, he's paid. And I can report to your listeners that at the time I was leaving the road fund, we didn't have any outstanding payments with feeder roads. We had cleared okay. all feeder roads. We had cleared. I mean, no certificate was due for payment from feeder roads. The highways, we had we had rigged the six months. Mm -hmm. The only department of the Minister of Rules that still had substantial uh, areas of payment was urban roads, and this is due to the fact that they were doing a lot of asphalt overlays. Okay. And, and, and the works that they were doing was such that we could not clear all the uh, the, ar the payment areas and bring them within the period that we wanted. Today, as I speak, and as I said earlier, uh, contractors have not been paid for six, for six months now, six. Uh, for in nine months now. Yeah. So it's even more than the six months. Mm -hmm. Not to talk about those con those payments which were due in December, mm -hmm. which were not paid, or last year november which were not paid or last year you, you can I, I don't know the last time they paid for periodic and routine maintenance hmm. but well, this were matters that we, i mean it was taken for granted that every month you will make we will make some payments every month for periodic maintenance for periodic maintenance for grass cutting who we'll pay you know just small small ones and we're able to keep up ah, with those payments. Yes. Yes. Because there was a plan. How to, when any time the money came in, we knew what proportion of the money should go to paying uh, uh, routine and periodic maintenance, and which was a given. I mean, for that, every month it was a given. Uh, those every those month, some routine or ma routine maintenance or periodic maintenance will be paid. Okay. Because you see, the road infrastructure is like that. It's just like your dress. Mm -hmm. If you have a white shirt and you wear it for two days and it's dirty, and you don't wear it, the third day probably people will not recognize that it's a white shirt. Mm. So you always need to clean. Okay. So you, just like the same like road infrastructure, when you do it, a, a vehicle can't have an accident on the road, and and and, and create difficulties, create problems on the road by scoop of the uh, 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 asphalt or the uh, the chippings that have been put on the road. Mm -hmm. So you need to always go back and repair. Because if you leave it there, immediately the vehicles, and the, for, in, uh, especially in rainy season, when the vehicles continue passing on that portion of the road, mm -hmm. the, it will turn into a gully. It will increase. The the the, uh, the 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 hole there will become bigger and bigger and bigger, and your cost of repair will then also increase. So okay. you always need to be able to maintain the road infrastructure. You need to prioritize routine and periodic maintenance. And that was important. Is that in any way linked to road tools? No, road tools are just that. Road tools 
are part of a management strategy or one of the management strategies in countries for the purposes of generating resources to maintain the roads. Okay. Yes, road tools go to the road fund. Okay. Because it's maintenance of the roads. Okay. okay. They go into maintenance. Okay. Road maintenance. Okay. But road tools in Ghana here, we have not segregated the road tools and 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 and, and uh, what's the word? Uh, we, have, we have not limited road tools collected in Ghana to tools collected on various roads. Okay. Uh, in other words, if you collect road tools on the uh, Adenta Ebru Road mm -hmm. at Adenta or the, 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 that, that uh, was it, Aimesa, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that money collected there will be used solely for that place. For that place. It goes into a general basket for routine maintenance. Everybody. Everybody. All roads. They all roads. Hmm. Yes. Uh, then I am wondering what you then make of the suggestion from your successor that if we really want to improve the quality of our roads, we need to increase road tools. Well, well that necessarily the argument the, has. Oh, wait, you know, when I when I got to the ministry, we had increased road tools and we were bashed. Yeah. Many people even yeah. bashed us seriously. And when you look at the sub region, mm -hmm. Ghana appears to have the lowest rate of road tolls. Okay. And because road infrastructure is property, mm -hmm. you need to maintain it. Okay. But the last time at the Ministry of Roads, when we did the estimated investment in road infrastructure in Ghana, it stood then at about seven billion dollars. Okay. Now, so if you have invested seven billion dollars into your roads, the least you can do is to do what? To maintain them. Mm -hmm. So, in one way of raising uh, resources to maintain those roads is through road tolls. Oh. In that, in countries, you pay road tolls by by kilometers. Okay. Even though you don't have road tolls at every kilometer, they calculate. At the point that you are going to pay the route to the cal calculate the number of kilometers that you have traveled, mm -hmm. or you might have traveled, and then you pay. But Ghana is not like that. We, we pay by capacity, okay. capacity of the vehicle. So a smaller vehicle would pay one city or 50 buses mm -hmm. in the bigger. And, and this is nothing. This, uh, one, city is, uh, one city is about uh, how much? Less than one dollar. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Far, far less. <laughs> about 60 cents. Yeah. Okay. And so, it's not up to sixty cents because the dollar is now uh, five cities. So five cities. Yeah. No, the dollar is cities. You are behind time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so once it is now up to sixty cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could be sixty cents because okay. Oh, oh no, no. You need a you need a hundred cents to get a dollar uh, to get one dollar. You need a hundred cents to get uh, one dollar. Yes. One dollar. So it's not even. It's, it's not even, just it's not even slow. Even it's not. Cents. Cents. Yeah. So it's, you see, so clearly, clearly. It's too low. It's too low. Okay. And that's that's that that has been the challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, in fixing the road tools, you don't just look at the amount of money that you receive from road users, but the general spending capacity okay. of those of the people. Okay. And because uh, the there's general poverty in this country, you are tempted to mitigate whatever hardship. Uh, the collection of road tools will impose on the people. So that's one consideration. That's why we have never gotten to that a point where we charge, charge realistic tolls for the uh, for the use of the roads. But the bigger question is, when the MPP took over power, they came to Parliament with a law. Because they had, they, had, they were falling through a policy, a policy of capping. Road fund. The capital of the statutory funds. Mm -hmm. Road fund was specifically established for the purposes of road maintenance. Mm -hmm. So when you go to buy diesel, petrol, or any other product that 
that will allow you move your car on the road apart from gas the gas was the unintended consequences of the policy mm -hmm. because it was never anticipated that vehicle owners will convert their vehicles to the use of gas yeah. so we would have imposed tax on the gas now you are paying it because you are going to use the road and the use of road will occasion tear and wear mm -hmm. And so it's like insurance. You have already contributed to a fund mm -hmm. so that when, by the use of the road, your use occasions tear and wear, there's money to do what? To fix it. To fix it. Now, so when they came to Parliament to cap the road fund, we said, no, don't cap it. Don't cap road fund. Ex exclude road fund from the policy. They refused. They refused and cap the road fund. The road fund today, Ghana government has creamed off about 4 billion Ghana cities from the road fund. Okay. Because of the capital. The last time, that was... 4 two, billion cities. That was even in 2021 when I was leaving parliament. It was about 4 billion. Today, I don't know how much. From, from the monies that were supposed to yeah, go into the road fund. Yeah, you got the cap 30%. Only 70% goes to the road fund. That's significant. Yes. And ah, to know how significant that amount is, you need to ask how much does government owe contractors at the road fund? Wouldn't the four billion have paid those contractors? Any of those monies were available to the road fund board for the payment of contractors. We will pay in interest on delayed payments. So the fact that we've capped road fund. We are paying more. Gov we are going to pay more than the 4 billion that has been taken away from it because of delayed payments. And contractors, we are going to render some contractors poor because their bankers will go off them and attach their properties to sell, to re realize the debt owed them. And so, they refused. They capped it. So part of the problem with the road fund today is the capping. It's the capping. Okay. Yes. And even, yes, because there's a law, you can't say that they, they are not doing personal to law. Okay. But they are not using the monies that, were, that have been creamed off the road fund to do other activities unconnected with the road sector. Okay. But the road fund itself, the rationale, the basis for its establishment was to use those resources mm -hmm. in the road sector. But that's not what is happening. Okay. Okay. So, does, so after identifying that problem, would increasing the tools solve anything? But increasing the tools also, when you increase the tools, and you, the other monies that you will get from the increment the tools will go to the road fund. And government again will do what? It will cap it. <laughs> so, so they may even increase, increase the cap to get more money. I get more money. Government will, because you'll get more money. If you increase, you get more money into the roof. So government will get more money. Okay. Yes. So, yes, you can also say that a more money, and the roof out to get more money. Mm -hmm. So why will you be saying that, well, I don't have money to pay contractors. I don't have money for road maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you're not arguing that, oh, government should stay off or release the road, road fund from the cap okay. to ensure that monies come to it okay. to pay. That, is, that could be a good first step. Yes, a good, good first step. Good first step. Because if monies are capped, they are unavail unavailable. Mm -hmm. So release them first. Okay. And when you release those monies, and we still see that it is not enough, mm -hmm. then we can then talk about, uh, Ghanaians will see, because you need to empathize with them, and they, need, they, will, they will understand that yes, government, you, you are trying to do something to meet their legitimate aspirations, okay. to get, get roads to their areas and, and, and facilitate convenience and comfort. Mm -hmm. But the money is not enough, and that you want to imp impose uh, or increase uh, road tools. Guardians will understand. But now you are taking, you are taking and doing other things, taking place to France and other things. It's not, it's not, there's no road in, in the sky. So <laughs> it's unconnected with the uh, uh, road sector. Yeah. And then you want to still increase tools so that you can 
make sure that next time you are flying an aircraft, it has a what? Uh, a bathroom or what? So you got to know. I'll, I'll come back to that issue. Very, very interesting. But uh, I think the issue of the non-payment of contractors have come up. Mm. A lot of uh, there's been suggestion by people who did contracts under you, mm. and of course under Mahama, uh, the John Mahama administration, who raised, who who uh, who are uh, perhaps alleging, uh, I mean, uh, wh wh how do I say it, uh, an attempt. So like they they feel that mm -hmm. there's been that they they, they 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 have decided not to pay them. Oh, uh, but this one. Me, I didn't say it. You are not saying it. Is that the chief executive of the Ghana Football uh, the Ghana Sports Council? What's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Nyantaji was deeply embedded in the MPP politics. And he said that contractors perceived with NDC contractors will not be paid. So, some of the contractors are not being paid because they are perceived to be NDC. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Senna, <laughs> I have spoken to many contractors, and even MPP uh, 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 contractors who are manifestly MPP, mm. who have professed their support for their party, are also being paid. Okay. Now the criteria for determining who is to be paid is only within the bosom of the of the minister. And so, and so <laughs> this time, even if you have a gold card or whatever card of the MPP, you are not going to be paid unless the minister so decides. Mm. Yeah, so 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 it's not it's not yes. I sympathize with the NDC. The people, the contractors were associated with the NDC. Uh, yes, I am aware that uh, and uh, Yentachi said it clearly uh, that they were targeted. Uh, they were, said that they should be paid because uh, they erroneously believe that when they are paid, they will use the money to support the NDC. Uh, but contractors are contractors are contractors. Okay. I, when I was at the ministry, and I had bashing for it when I said it the last time, I did not look at the faces or color of contractors to pay them. In fact, uh, MPP contractors now even attest to that. I mean, that they just sit down because they're on the program of payment. Uh, sometimes they'll be there and they'll get an alert from their banks that they, they haven't paid. Uh, because I believe seriously that. Like I said earlier, no contractor has money under his bed. Okay. They all go to their financiers. Take the money. And that if if you build the capacity of contractors to deliver on time and create the confidence in their uh, financiers that when they give them facilities, they will pay back, you build the prosperity in the country. Okay. And so uh, you don't, you don't uh, like uh, Plato once said, you can't keep, you can't develop a country we are keeping one class of people perpetually subjugated. You must liberate the energies of all people so that the country can develop holistically. These people do not understand that. MPP doesn't understand that. You can't. Why? When we had women emancipation, it's not that we consider them as lower human beings. We just think that a, a woman is a woman is a woman, and a woman is a human being. And if we say that a human being is capable of anything, then a woman is capable of anything. You see, but God in his, in, in his uh, uh, wisdom created men and created women. Mm -hmm. Okay, but invested them with the same level of intelligence, the same level of capacity. So when you want to develop a nation, and you think that your women, like the uh, uh, Afghanistan Taliban people, you think that your women should not be playing parts. You are, you are, you are, you are crushing, you are crushing the energies, the capacities, the innovative minds of a critical mass of your population. Who could help develop your population? Okay. The same thing. If you think that MPP, NDC contractors should not be, you are crushing, not NDC people, you are crushing Ghanaians. And you are suppressing the capacities of your people. Because what they do help in the development of the country. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, well, uh, let, I think we, we've, we've, we've said enough about race. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize we whilst we were talking, we were going back to the issue of the. Uh, we talk about private gesture. I said there are no roads in the sky. 
Is that I, I guess I, I just give an example <laughs> that the road fund was extended solely for the purposes of road maintenance, the road infrastructure. Mm. But I, I don't know of rules in the sky. No, but, but what do you make of that? They use coordinates, not so. They, yes. Uh, yes, no rules. Yeah. Well, what do you make of that whole issue regarding the president's choice of private jets? Levels don't change. <laughs> <laughs> Levels don't change. The president is showing us his level. He showing us who he's made of. It's like, like, you know, he's bought a new uh, Lexus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cute. Levels don't change. So the president is always demonstrating his new level. His new level. And which level uh, you, uh, is, the, is his, his father was the president of Ghana and uh, Buzia. Uh, so he acquired the, those levels a long time ago. He was surprised because he was not president. Now that he's president. So he's just leaving his level. But, but for a country like Ghana, that should worry us. That clearly should worry us. Everybody cuts his coat according to his size. The first parliament that was established under the venerable late Jerry John Rollins mm -hmm. were given money to go and buy second hand vehicles, not so. Yeah. Because Ghana was in dire streets. Not that the Rollins did not understand that new cars were needed, mm -hmm. but we simply did not have the money. So we had to make do with what we had. And that is it. A president must be sensitive to the hardship okay. that the people of a country are facing and must exude, portray a sense, a deep sense of understanding mm -hmm. of the difficulties his people are going through okay. and not engage in the life of luxury when his people are wallowing in poverty. Mm -hmm. That is not what is expected of governments. Now, America has Air Force One. Mm -hmm. Everything is inside. Even, even when the pleasant, pleasant flies, no matter the level of the, the height of the plane, he's able to co communicate and engage in things that he would have done while in the office. Okay. Can only not be physically present. But that's America. Mm -hmm. you know, other, other presidents do not even have that luxury of owning uh, uh, presidential jets. They go commercial. They go commercial. But if you are poor and your president is engaging in luxury, filthy luxury, which is sometimes nauseating, then people have a cause to complain. That is exactly the thinking that got the president to return his salary increase. If you say that we don't have resources and that the demand of the TUC cannot be accommodated and that what can be accommodated in government budget and spending is a 4% increase. Is it not equitable that you also enjoy a 4% increase if you want an increment in your salary at all? with all the benefits and privileges that have been conferred on you. So when the people see that you are saying we should tighten our belts, and your belt holes cannot even fit your stomach, don't complain. Don't complain. And it is quiet. It's what has gotten the president to the fund the money. Then is there not an inconsistency between that decision and then the, the, the issue of the private jet? Well, the president says, but maybe that is the way the MPP behaves. You recall when we bought the Rollins bought the private jet, mm -hmm. President Kufour came and said he would not use it. Uh, for the years that he stayed in office, especially the first time, he was traveling on commercial vehicles, or commercial uh, aircrafts. 
what did he exchange that aircraft that President Rollins had bought for a Chinese trainer, a planes, and a fighter? Then took steps to buy this particular one. So, so yes, and that aircraft was sitting on the tarmac, and, and wasting away. Now we have that. Now we have the presidential jet. It's capable of flying to any destination. I've I've read about aviation experts saying that anybody who argues that our, this aircraft is not long range probably does not understand uh, aviation. Aviation technology, or or or, or, or uh, the size of aviation. Okay. Uh, clearly, this our aircraft can take you anywhere, mm. and this is not a, an aircraft that you can describe as a flying coffin. It's relatively new. In fact, yes, yesterday the president flew with it, with that particular aircraft, the Tamale, on his way to Bolaga to attend the Garaba Association conference. Why the president will decide? That one is going on uh, international tours. He will not use that aircraft. It's anybody's guess. Because that's no swimming pool. That's no bathroom. Where the president city sits with about eight other people. So it's, it's not exclusive. The place that the president sits in the plane, plane is not exclusive okay. to the president. Probably, and the guess that I've seen on social media. Uh, where the president sit is quite exclusive to him. Mm -hmm. So maybe he wants that exclusivity, that privilege of sitting alone in the class, the presidential class. And we don't have it. Probably that's why. But those, even those aircrafts are in the nature of the one we have. Mm -hmm. They're not the 747s that the Saudis have for their kings. They're just the same embryo and of the of, of aircraft of that type, sitting many people, but reconfigured mm. to give privacy to the owner of the plane. And so, but you pay, pay through your nose. If you want that luxury, nothing goes for free. In Ghana, pays for that. So you see, they were going to be embarrassed when Okodato filed a question in Parliament for a disclosure of how much was involved okay. in the presidential travels. They were going to be brought. That's why they scattered the attempt to find out. I said, that's the soul. Because the president knows that. The president knows that. His advisors knows that. Know that. The minister of finance knows that. The minister of national security knows that. But they are paying heavily for that. For that. You, you, you said scattered. Because uh, your your former colleague, Ukute Tuablakwa, and the minority are quite confident they can still get that question answered. But the... Uh, because the minute that has referred him to the National Security Minister, they said, we'll go to the National Security Minister, yeah, that's yeah, where you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you see, you strike the metal, if you want the shape, you strike the metal, metal where it's hot, not so. Mm -hmm. So, by the time the National Security comes, that issue will no longer be an issue. Hmm. So you, you see a deliberate strategy that... That was scattered. The minister had... When the first, <laughs> question first got to him, when Parliament transmitted the question to him, he could not answer within the time limit set by Parliament for said questions to be answered. So he came to Parliament to ask for an extension because they were putting together the information for the purposes of informing parliament. I think when they put together the information, they were baffled, they were dumbfounded, they were confused or surprised about the figures that were coming out. And so the best way not to embarrass and shame the presidency is to hide and the national security and you know the refrain in Ghana when something is a national security issue then the people of this country according to the MPP are not, are not supposed to know 
<laughs> no, but the issue has come up again. When well, he's taking another one. They have taken another one, but let's you wait and you see what will happen. Huh. <laughs> are you saying your people have been out forced to? No, they're not being forced. It's just a strategy yeah. to protect the image of government. And not make it look too bad in the eyes of the public. Okay. Now, yes, I am convinced beyond doubt that they know how much is involved. That the minister knows. The finance minister knows. Ah. Even the money that goes to national security must originate from the finance ministry. Even the finance minister, the, and money doesn't go to sit at the uh, national yeah. security ministry. I mean, if the uh, for national security ministry is to engage, involve, or undertake an expenditure, they will have to write for a warrant to do that. Okay. Because the minister will have to assure them that there's money to pay for that activity. But that will be part of his budget. They okay. first of all indicate which budget they are, for which but, uh, uh, item they are taking the money, and justify their expenditure, and couple the justification with the uh, supporting documents before the minister can approve their expenditure. So the uh, so finance knows how much each ministry is spending and for what. Hmm. Uh, knows. There's no money sitting. I mean, no ministry has a bank account where when they <laughs> approve the budget, they transfer the budget. No, 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 no. There's nothing like that. No, but but then I, I do not know because the, the then but but do you understand how the process went in? Because you are you spend a substantial time in parliament, and so you understand the procedures that parliament adopts. Uh, you understand how you went there because I also feel that there, there should have been an insistence by the speaker and the. They, they, they should have gotten the finance minister to answer the question by all means. The speaker is just a presiding officer. And he has to balance mm. the, the requirement to satisfy, the, to answer a question by, filed by a member and inform the public. And the requirement that the information but the true, accurate, and factual. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if a minister comes to say, look, I'm still gathering my facts. I'm still gathering the figures. I'm still putting together the information. The interest of the speaker is to ensure that the information is not only there, but that information is true, is accurate, and factual. Okay. And so weighing it against the immediacy of answering the question, mm -hmm. the speaker might say, okay, Let's give him more time to answer. Okay. Now, when the minister comes back to say, oh, well, and, and this parliamentary practice, and that's politics. When the minister comes to say, look, uh, yes, I've had second thought about this. This matter is squarely within the domain of the National Security Ministry. Mm. So I think that I am not the proper person to answer the question. The speaker will not say you are the proper person. After all, the rules of parliament, the rules of parliament says that the question must be directed to the ministry that has supervisory authority over the matter. So you can say, oh, yes, even though the facts are available, the figures are available, I don't think they are the proper person to answer this question. And probably re refers to the standing orders. Okay. So this is a national security matter. And it's the national security uh, minister who handles that. He's tied the hands of the, of, the, of the speaker. Now in parliament you must be smart. In politics you must be smart. So every time you must pour in over the rules, over the regulations, over procedure. Because if not, you'll be caught, you'll be embarrassed. So mm. for the time being, even though they had initially settled to answer, they thought that the, the heat then, and you saw social media then, 
Ils sont dans 14. Ils sont dans Tilapia. Ils sont Tilapia. Ils sont dans tous les So, it was totally in the interest of government. To For avoid that question at all. To delay answering the question. Okay. I'm not saying avoid. To delay, delay answering, answering the question. Okay. Yes. And that's what they did. And they succeeded because they took the route of proper custody. Who has proper custody? And that's the national security. And they said national security. And the, pres and the speaker agreed to that. Hmm. Uh, once we are in parliament, uh, one thing that happened recently that there are a lot of questions about uh, is this issue of Eka Ake AGM mm -hmm. seeking to offload some shares to the government of Ghana. Out of a billion dollars. Yes. In fact, I recall vividly, I had, I think I had a conversation with you mm. when yourself and some members of the minority were fighting that attempt to sell shares that you had allocated to a company that you had created under GMPC called GMPC S Uh I don't know what you make of that thing going back to parliament. And this time around, at that humongous amount that they are demanding for those shares. Well, so... So that is the problem. The very introductory statement you made is the problem of Aka. Even though there are other problems. Aka came into this country and engaged in exploration even before it registered under the GMPC laws. I mean, that, 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 that was during the time of Kufo. Now, the... The issue that has got the minority talking and civil society organizations talking is the amount at which ACA is offloading, is seeking to offload issues. Or let's put it this way, is the amount government is seeking to acquire shares from ACA. Because we all know, we all know that just a few months ago, a few months ago, nobody, and especially the minority, understood why government was seeking to offload issues to Aga. And offloaded issues at ridiculously low prices to Aga. Aka. Aka has since sunk money and discovered oil in commercial quantities in the wells that they were exploring. The price of a share is directly linked to the amount of oil in the wells and the amount of investment in those wells. Today, as we speak, there are reports who say that Aka spent 380 million. There are reports which spent, say that Aka spent a little above 400 million. And there are reports that Aka spent about 1 billion. There is no, there's no argument on the commerciality of the worlds. Okay. There's no argument. One has crude, the other has crude and gas. Okay. So there's no argument. Now, if the price of a share of ACA is determined by the commerciality of the wells and the amount of investment in those wells, it stands to reason that we know exactly how much Aka invested in those worlds. Okay. To satisfy ourselves that indeed the price at which we are reacquiring those shares is reflective of the investment that has gone into the worlds. Okay. So the controversy on the expenditure and investment in the worlds is what is generating the second uh, confusion. And that's why the minority has called for further due diligence. 
to determine the investment so made in the world. So, but Simon has also argued the vice yeah, vice president, or either president or vice president, yeah, vice president, vice president of Imani has always also argued that way. And so, so that is the distance. Now you see, transparency and accountability are sine qua non for the protection of the resources of a country. How was the value of the shares arrived at? Well, this I entitled to know. Because the resource, the Ghanaian resource, is for the people of Ghana. Government is only an agent of the people. And an agent, when it does activities or undertakes an assignment on behalf of a master, a principal, informs the, the principal. In this particular case, the, the principal even has to rectify and that's why they are coming to parliament mm -hmm. you see so why will you be cloud these activities in mystery why will you do that and accountability whether political or financial is important in politics and, and that's the twin brother or sister of transparency Openness. Hmm. We're not seeing that in the reacquisition. And that is mad seriously by the fact that just a few months ago we were offloading shares. We were given a shares. And a few months after we had given them those shares, we are seeking to acquire <laughs> <Re> <laughs> them. So this is a day. Did we know? That the 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 wells had prospects. The GMPC know. Was it incapable for GMPC to take the initiative of investing resources in uh, supporting Aka to come out with the find. Yes, there's always the danger that you get a wild card. That is, you sink a, a well and there's no oil. Mm. But and that's why we should know whether the po the wells held prospects. Okay. And whether we could not invest in the, we could not bring out our contributions mm -hmm. to assess Aka to use its technology and experience to find the oil. Because if we had done so, today, the shares that we offloaded to Aka would have what? Appreciated. Appreciated. Simply. Appreciated. And Ghana would have been better for it. It's far better. Because it's an investment. And it's a calculated risk. It's far better to have partnered Aka with the existing shares that we had, contributing our quota to the investment drive in those worlds and reaping the benefits of the fine through the number of shares we have than waiting for Aqua to, Aqua to say that they have found the oil. They are now, the oil is in commercial quantities and we are now seeking to acquire, to increase our holding in the venture. Clearly, it's after the fact. Hmm. Then... So you are happy with how Parliament has treated it? I'm, I'm exceedingly happy. I'm exceedingly happy. Go back. The and price of democracy is what? Perpetual vigilance. I'm extremely happy. And it you is think the, the country is ruled by angels? I'm guessing it is in that context that you... I, I think last Saturday I heard you talking about... Uh, this whole brouhaha around former President Mohammed's comment do or die that people are talking about. The the principle of vigilance that you're talking about. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the price of uh, democracy is perpetual, virgin. perpetual. You don't blink your eye. You never let your guard down. No. You see the TV advert where they were counting bags, and that person opened his eyes as if he was going to uh, swallow the blood papers. That's what is required. Because you know why uh, Afakonde manipulated his country's constitution to continue to stay in power? Because power is sweet. And because power is sweet, uh, when Nana Kofado leaves the presidency, you, you think that he will fly, fly a private jet with a shower? Or you fly a private jet with an exclusive presidential area? Yeah. They didn't do that. Because the cost will be on him. So if you want to continue to have access to the privileges of that attaches to the office of the president, you may want to temper with the constitution. <laughs> so that he can continue to enjoy. <laughs> so you see, I said it I said it on Saturday and I'll say it on uh, your network. Do or die. It's a call to duty. A call to duty. Duty. For who? For the party, yes, of our party. For our party people. For everybody. <laughs> to subordinate his interest to the interest of the party. But but for those who were listening, there are those who have held the opinion that the president wasn't speaking to only party agents. He was speaking in an interview. So we a lot of a lot more people were listening. So he's open to interpretation to whoever is listening. First of all, let's backtrack. The president is undertaking a thank you tour across the country. He's finished the he's finished the northern belt. He's now in the middle middle belt. Yeah. To thank NDC supporters and NDC sympathizers. Mm -hmm for voting overwhelmingly for the party in the 2020 elections. So the primary responsibility, the primary reason why His Excellency John Draman Mahama was in the Bunu region was to thank NDC sympathizers and NDC agents, NDC supporters for the confidence reposed not only in him, but the party as a whole. Did he go to thank the NPP people for defeating him in the elections? Was that the purpose? They said he was thanking Ghanaians so that they could include the NPP people. But that, so he's thanking Ghanaians, mm -hmm. and so that includes the NPP people. Yeah. And, but NPP people are not going to be in the ballot uh, polling station for the NDC. They will be the, be for their party. And that brings me to the second leg of my analysis of what John Draman and Mama said. I have said, and you know my views on this matter, the words are like a chameleon. When we're growing up, they say, Ch chameleon. <laughs> a chameleon. Huh? Words are like that. They take their color from their surroundings. You know how a chameleon behaves. That's how words are. So words will mean differently in different contexts. The same word can mean different things in a different context. Mm. So in understanding the meaning of an expression, you need to look at the context. And the context is not removed from the words. Okay. There are matters that come before the words. There are sentences or words that come before the word that is the subject matter of the discussion and words that come after them. You put them together mm -hmm. and they form a context. And that's why Senior Comrade Kosipra has said that the finality of this argument, even at your station here, mm -hmm. 
It's simple. Very, very simple. To determine whether the call to duty, which was manifested in the phrase, do or die, is the same thing as all die, be die. That has influenced and agitated this conversation. Is to play what Nana Adodanko Akufado said at Etiwa. Play the context. That's the words that he emitted, he said at Etiwa, which included all die, be die. And also play the voice of John Draman and Muhammad, which includes the area that talks about do and die. And that will set the stage for a contextual analysis of the two statements. And which statement is a call to violence? Clear and simple. I don't know why we are, we are going around in circles. Hmm. Simple. And call uh, people with deep understanding of semantics. People who learned in the Queen's language to do an analysis of the context. So me, I'm not prepared to engage those who are saying that that do or die phrase can lend itself to <laughs> different interpretations. And that's, that's their whole thinking. <laughs> because if you come, because we, English is our second language, not so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do and die is not a jargon. It's a, it's a clear English idiomatic expression. It's not a jargon. It's not like all die with die. You can't find all die with die in any English dictionary. It's a jargon. But do or die, <laughs> you go to Webster. It's there. Webster's dictionary. The one you were using when you were still in secondary school for five or SS3. Webster. It's there. We still use it online anyway. You use it online? Yeah. Uh -huh. But how do you graduate to Cambridge? <laughs> or Oxford Learners Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Or Advanced Dictionary. Oxford Advanced Dictionary. Yeah. They all contain the idiomatic expression, do or die. But it's it, not your mama's invention. Though. But do you, because I, I recall in the 2020 elections, mm. when a couple of constituencies, mm. and I recall we had conversations where you were telling me that those constituencies, you make sure are won for the NDC. Yes. Did you lose any? I lost Wale Wale, only Wale Wale, and I lost Wale Wale by 1,000 votes. Huh. <laughs> so Wale Wale closed? Yes, Wale Wale closed because even, uh, even though I do not fault them, because look, politics is local. Okay. But they refuse my strategy. Mm. Who? The party or the 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 candidate and his executives. Oh. You see, constituencies are divided into electoral areas. Electoral areas are divided into uh, polling stations. All electoral areas have their peculiar problems. Okay. Some might be infrastructure. Some might be the fact that they think that they have been hard done by, by the city MP. Mm -hmm. Some might be family blood issues. Mm -hmm. So you exploit them. And these are areas, you go to the areas, and, but I don't know what I should be talking about this. Yeah, I know. It's a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, l l I, wanted, I wanted to ask, after what happened in 2020? Mm. Um, so, you, so, I didn't know the candidate from Adam. I had never met him. So, Bunkurugu. Even though when I went to Bunkrumo and after the meeting, he followed me and said, oh, yeah, I know you. I said, where? He said, oh, I was working in the, in the library of the Attorney General's office. And you used to come there to read. You stayed there for a very long time. 
That's when I, that's my, how I came into contact with you. So you okay. used to read at the Library of the Attorney General. Yeah, because the, it's, if you are a law student, you want to read. Okay. Uh, the Attorney General's office, apart from the Faculty of Law office, a library, should be the most resourceful library. Okay. Yeah, that's the, uh, the whole office of government. Okay. The whole library of government. That's why me, I used to read. I'll just go there and then uh, sit down there. And whatever case you want, you get. That time there was no online. That's what you get. So that's why me, I used to read. Okay. Now, then, so when I adapted the constituency, I discussed strategy with him. I discussed strategy with him. And we implemented the strategy to the letter. The former minister for Northeast, former MP, when he saw me after the election, said, Oh, you came to push me away. I said, But I told you I was coming to your place. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing, Willensy. I didn't know the man. In fact, <laughs> after Willensy, when I was going there to, to adapt the constituency, I actually met the candidate and his executives on the way going towards Bimbla and we passed. But, but because I was using a four wheel, he suspected because I had told him I was coming. He suspected that I was the one going. So he called my number and I answered. I said, Oh, we are on our way. He said, Oh, you just passed us. So we, so we stopped and we reversed and we met. So we went back to Bimbla and did the formal introduction and uh, co uh, communication and then strategy in initial strategy and then i followed them then we then started he was doing some campaign rounds so we i followed him and we we're doing the until evening time when i left and thereafter all the things i said we should do we did and he won convincingly convincingly Mm. Kumbungu, they were underlying currents. Underlying the MPP MP was showing some unexplained strength. He was making waves. And there was fire in our house. Because the present uh, MP had defeated a city and NDC MP okay. in primaries. So there were serious undercurrents. I remember when John Ramana Mahama was undertaking his tours. When he was seeking the flag bearership of the party. Kumbungu was a special case. When we got there, we had to, first of all, stop His Excellency John Ramana Mahama on the way from Savalugu to Kumbungu for close to 15 minutes. Just for Kumbungu to organize. Because they were not, it was not, it was disorganized. And when we got to Kumbu, we had to spend close to 30 minutes or more in the chief's palace just to get to give the executives enough time to organize the meeting. We had to manage the certain arrangements. So, because I was part of the activities around that time i appreciated precisely the challenge is there the challenge is there if you go and look at the results this is the first time in the history of kumbungu in the fourth i mean in political in elections in the fourth republic for an mpp candidate to make such significant gains in an election the first time so we could have taken it as a given okay that we, we couldn't have taken it because the carrots were strong so that was the only reason that i added Kumungu. the carrots were really strong okay i remember when we i decided to meet the whole constituency when I say the whole constituency, I mean all the branch executives. Okay. The opinion leaders, the former branch executives, the former executive constituency executives, opinion leaders, 
the former MPs, they were available at one sitting. When we got there, when, the, when we got to the venue, the people were standing in clusters. In clusters. And that communicated to me. That clearly told me that unity and togetherness, teamwork, was a challenge. And so that's how we, we were able to overcome it. So I'm happy that. And uh, those I assisted, some made very good showing in the elections, and some won. Mm. Yes. Uh, you left the Tamale Central seats, currently occupied by Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed. Your impression so far? Oh, he's good. He's doing his best. I have said that the he's, an, he's just come into office. Mm -hmm. I've had reports from people who have said, oh, he's this, he's that. I remember one person came to me and said, oh, he's being invited every now and then by the Tamil Central people to come and contest Mutala. And that was me. He came to my house in May. I said, ah. And what did, what did you tell them? They said, oh, that's why I'm here. I said, no, 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 no. Give him time to work. And even this May, by May, the time I was speaking to him, they had not paid the MPs. They are not even received their salary. They are, they are, he's not resourceful. So when they say he's not working, it means that he's not going around and doing... Uh, the, you know, uh, <laughs> 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 yes, the one was I said, no, 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 no. Give him time to work. Nobody should expect miracles from him now. Okay. Yes. So I think that he's doing his best under the circumstances. Tamil Centra is a metropolitan constituency. That is the only urban constituency in the whole of northern Ghana. There is no village in Tamale Centre. No. Was it a difficult place to run? Well, it's, it's metropolitan. If one can say it's cosmopolitan. Yeah. First of all, you have to deal with the constituents, those who are resident mm -hmm. in Tamale Centre. And you have to deal with those who are not resident in Tamil Centre, but are on daily basis in Tamil Centre. Okay. They are not even registered voters in Tamil Centre. But you still have to deal with them. Uh, they, are, they are there. They are influencing opinion. Hmm. Because uh, on a daily basis, you see, all the big markets in Tamil are in Tamil Centre. All the big mocks in Tamil are in Tamil all the banks are in Tamil Centre. In fact, one musician even said, oh, Tamil Centre are so intelligent. The people in Tamil Centre are so intelligent that they had added beans and rice together and they are called it wachi. Instead of calling it rice and beans. <laughs> 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 so you need to know that you are dealing with people far larger than your constituency. That means... So, uh, and you must have the heart to do that. Okay. For close to 15 years, I did that. I remember one of the advice I gave to him was that he should not listen. I mean, he should listen, he should hear, but he should not talk. Listen, hear, not talk. Just do. Hmm. Because if you talk, that's what they will use to assess you. What you say, know what you do. Do, and they say, oh, he's done that, he's done that. But you say, you're doing this, I'm going to do this, I'm going, hey. You're in trouble. <laughs> 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 and this advice to the first, second year I was made MP for Tamar Centre. One man who single-handedly adapted me as his brother gave me that advice. He said, Do, Inusa, do, don't talk. Hmm. I have to, we have to bring this to a close. But before we do that, I, this one question I, I've always thought about asking. You are close to former President Mahama, right? 
Yes, you constantly converse with him. I'm close to him. Yeah. So I, I'm wondering, first of all, what is thinking on? Uh, I've heard him talk a couple of times because he is that to contest one election, 2012, win it, lose 2016. 2020, he seemed quite pained by what happened. Lives were lost. Uh, it seemed uh, the, a lot of force was used. 2024, he seems he has already declared interest. What's his thinking at this point? I'm wondering what is going through his mind. Have he, has he ever had conversations with you about why he wants to attempt an election again and what he wants to do? Why? Why is it part of your thinking that you should not have attempted an election <laughs> again? <laughs> if it is part of your, you have to exercise it. <laughs> why? The, the I have to is, ask a question. The fact is. Mm. As we speak today, nobody in the NDC, apart from John Mahaman, John Draman Mahaman, can run an election devoid of the record of John Draman Mahaman. So, if John Draman Mahaman is qualified to contest in an election mm -hmm. and decides not to contest the election, and you go to, you elect a new person to contest the election. And then that person is running on the record of John Draman and Mahama. You say, oh, NDC did this, NDC did that, and that will be John Draman and Mahama. What do you think that people will say? If John Draman and Mahama was that qualified, why is he not running? They ask that question. Hmm. Or you think they ask that question? You ask. Another question. Ah, but the man is here. He himself should have run because he thinks that that record cannot win him election. That's why he's not running. That's what they will say. So, so you need to understand that John Draman Muhammad's stance today is a stance imposed on him by circumstances. The circumstances in which we find ourselves. But that has been made lighter by the fact that he's well, he's fit, he's willing and capable of running election 2024. It's made lighter. Because you do not want to create a situation where they will ask you a question and you can answer. You can answer. So, John Draman Mahama, as we speak today, is the best option, not only for the NDC, but for the people of Ghana. Why? Again, this was a person who some had reasons to say that if borrowing was all that government was about, their 16 year old sons could be presidents of this country. Now the verdict is out there that no government in the history of this country in the history of the fourth uh, republic has borrowed more than those who said that borrowing was the lazy man's approach to governance. So you see that they were telling lies. You see they were telling lies. These were the people who said, oh, John Dewey Mama is talking about infrastructure, infrastructure. Do we eat infrastructure? Do we eat infrastructure? Today, they are commissioning even electric transformers. It's not infrastructure. Transformer, electricity transformer. Even that was not reserved for an assemblyman of an area. It was just the ECG officers who went and put the lights on. But today, <laughs> people have gone to commission transformers. They said that the inflation, what was inflation all about? When Mills got uh, 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 
uh, nine, single digit inflation. Single digit inflation, nine percent. Yeah, for the longest period in the history. They said, "Well, what is that about?" So they, when they come to Parliament to read the budget, two or three pages are devoted to how how they are, how they have struggled to maintain inflation. <laughs> you know, so you see, it means that John Draman and Mahama was on a better trajectory to the development of this country. Today, contractors are crying. Never. Did I see during the time that John Dramani Mama was in office, and particularly during the time I was in office, the contractors cried this long. Okay. So even the people of this country are now realizing that they were hoodwinked hood, hood mm -hmm. into voting the MPP. What is what is my evidence? In 2016. Because of the propaganda against the NDC, John Dramano got about 4.8 or so million votes. Mm -hmm. Not so. About 4.8. Yeah. And NDC got 106 members Six. in parliament. In 2020, more than or about 1 million more people repose their confidence in your man mama. Because six point three votes. Million votes. So clearly an NDC as a party broke even with the NDC uh, with the MPP. In fact MP NDC won the parliamentary elections. But, but for our vigilance. I tell you as an insider that the reports that was coming to us on the 8th, the 9th of the 8th of December clearly indicated that NDC was sailing through the parliamentary elections. We made a strategic mistake. I will mention it on radio. And that refocused attention on the parliamentary seats. So, if you have a president who was voted down mm -hmm. in 2016, and in 2020, the party represented him to the people of Ghana as the flock bearer. And clearly, many more people than the people who voted in down in 2016 repose their confidence in him. His polls is not dropping. It's doing what? It's rising. So far as in Ghana, we don't have periodic polls in between elections. Using the figures of 2016 and the figures of 2020, John Dramani Mahama and the NDC is on an upward climb, not a downward uh, fall. And I believe seriously that we are just approaching the signpost where president has been elected. In 2024, he will be the president of this country. You're confident the, of that? I'm very confident of that by the people of this country. That is why he's called for vigilance. That's why he's called for vigilance. Because one of the things that got us one of the things that got us into a situation where we felt and thought and rightly so that we won the elections was what was reported from the polling stations across the country. But the evidence manifesting that was not properly kept. Okay. It was not properly kept. Some people, even some parliamentary candidates, left left the coalition center even before the results were declared. Some thought they had won and started jubilating when the electoral commission had not officially communicated the win. 
safi yosu safi yosu eh mm-hmm. is a case in point takradi you remember yeah is a case in point tachima another case in point in some school our our officers were told that because of the night they it was getting night or so and the security problems they should retire and come the next day but the next day they had declared the results so your mama is saying that oh, at this time no back away don't do it away <laughs> just stay there <laughs> and make sure they're right <laughs> stay there just stay there and don't bring them ah just stay there if you want to attend to nature's call get somebody to come and relieve you but under no circumstance should our representative not be at the polling station and you see the basis of any election in ghana is the polling station we don't vote at the collection center we don't vote at the regional office we vote at the polling station the collection of all the resources and its collation forms the basis for declaring whether a person has been voted an mp or a person has been voted a president so your attention should be on the police station and that's why he adds that if we are vigilant there will not be need to go to supreme court because the results will manifest the ultimate will of the people of the people hmm. Alaji, uh, thank you Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you and have a conversation with you. Thank you. By the way, Nene Kufuado says you lawyers are leading the charge of not paying taxes. Uh, 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 he's, he's been misled by his uh, his finance minister. You are saying that is inaccurate? Yeah, it's inaccurate. The finance minister has said that there were about 6,000 lawyers who were not paying his taxes. And the question was, how many lawyers are there in Ghana? <laughs> 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 